Okay, let's start. Um, where's everyone? Okay, so today we're going to talk about jargon. Yay! Um, <coughs> right? Well, why are we doing this? So we're doing this because we need to have certain vocabulary we'll be able to talk sensibly with, to each other about macroevolution. So we're going to learn some of that, learn about a little bit of how, how to read a tree, um, and that way we can talk about more interesting things later. Okay, so just sort of essential vocab we have to get through. Okay, and we'll see what this is doing later. Why are we, are we talking about this? Odd bird. Okay, first a uh, clicker question. Okay, so uh, channel 41. 41 for Map Revolution Fun. And this is just a one point question, equal credit each answer. Okay, so some questions, some things that you should know. I'll give you, you know, two points for answering right, one point for answering wrong, zero points for not showing up. Um, something like this, where I want your opinion. Um, there's a right answer, but you might be, you should be honest for not knowing it yet. I'll give you equal points for right or wrong answers, but again, no points for not showing up. So, show up. Right. Okay. Wait, wait. Yeah. Right now, we'll just gonna, we'll, we'll talk about this in a sec. But we'll talk about this later in the later in the, the day. Oh yes. Yeah. So the so question is: For a clickers, do you discuss with your neighbors? Typically, no. Um, but if about sometimes I will say yes, but in this case, no. It was like, I'm using it for like, you know, what's Acromermex? They were like, hey, what's Acromermex? It's an ant. Yes. Okay. Everyone clicked? Survey says? Yes. Correct answer is no. Which is good. See, we're going to learn today. Um, so we'll talk about why. Then they can go back and I can see who said yes and I can get you later. <laughs> okay, so learning objectives for today. Um, precise language is essential to science. Right? You can say, oh, the thingy. and we have, we have vicious fights about what words mean in science. It's kind of sad, but it happens. And it's important because if I'm saying speciation is X, and someone's saying no speciation is Y, we both talk about things that affect speciation. If we don't have the same term in mind, we can have these fruitless fights where we just fight about mistaken words rather than something about biology. Okay? So we need to learn and discuss some particular vocabulary that's useful in the rest of the semester. So first of all, what's a species? Right, so who thinks she or he knows what a species is? Okay. So is it an organism or a set of organisms? Well, it's like there are multiple leopards connected to one another, but maybe they can't reproduce like a house cat. Okay. Okay. They produce fertile offspring. They produce fertile offspring. In nature, in the wild, with artificial insemination. Yeah, in the wild. Okay, in the wild. All right. What else? What are the species definitions? Yeah. Well, I guess those are both like versions of the biological concept, but then you can also look at um, just visual morphological data. You can say they look similar to so old, like old we do it, or look at genetic data now. And say, mm -hmm. like, if they share so much in common, then they are more likely to be a species. Okay, so recognizing clumps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? What was that? Paleontology was a species. Paleontology. You can't, you can't meet them anymore. Hey, fossil. Okay. Well, there are many, many, many species concepts. Okay. Here is a subset of them. <coughs> um, 
the most common one is biological species of plant cells. Okay? These are groups that are potentially interbreeding with populations, or you're able to isolate from other such groups. Okay? Now, in practice, we don't often go out and try mating things together. Right? Because, first of all, that doesn't always work. Right? So pandas in captivity don't mate very well. Pandas are species, yes. Right? But based on you know, early years of captivity, they're not a species. It's nothing that they can make with at all. Right? <coughs> Um, other things will mate in captivity, but they won't mate in the wild. Because like they don't encounter each other in the wild. Um, and so we don't actually use, use mating tests. What we usually do is use other markers to tell us are these things interbreeding or not. So we can measure gene flow. We can um, look for morphological differences that suggest that they don't interbreed. As well, we'll look at work looking at like insect genitalia, for example. Um, <coughs> it's a sort of the general idea that most biologists have. Now, one thing about speciation is that, well, species is that when you when you sort of stop interbreeding, then you start forming these other groups too. Right? So once I stop interbreeding, then I no longer, then I might form different ecological clumps from other species and things like that. So these also relate to each other. This is a gray area where people fight. There's also very clear areas where we don't fight. Right. So the oak trees, you know, sometimes form fertile offspring. So is, is there one species out there or multiple species out there? That's fuzzy. Right. But do humans mate with chimps or bonobos? No, we don't. Right? So we're clearly different species. Okay, so this fuzziness is also a distinction. Okay, any questions about this? Okay, so in this class, when you talk about species, it's sort of something about this area. But again, remember, it's it's a fuzzy definition sometimes. Okay. Okay. Speciation. So the geography of speciation. So here we have this happy interbreeding population, and then things happen to it. Okay. Um, in this case, a barrier arises, so maybe it's water barrier they don't cross, and then at least one of the ones change, and then if I were to put them back together, they wouldn't interbreed anymore. Okay. And so this is known as allopatric speciation. Okay. Allo, different, patric, country, different country. Sympatric, they change, they change, and they change all in one location and become different species. Okay. And then finally, parapatric is somewhere in between. Okay. And just thinking about some of the, the geography of speciation. Okay. Which do you think is most common? Allo. Allo. Who agrees? Okay. Who disagrees? Okay. That's boring. Yes. So. <laughs> Allopatric. Why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What exactly? What? Why? Why would that be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the enemy of speciation is interbreeding. So if I have these wonderful purple alleles, right, if we look really sexy to other purple ones, right, if they start getting mixed together, then that's because those species are no longer distinct, they merge back together. Right? Um, and so a lot of work in speciation is trying to figure out how you get this difference um, to arise. Right? Whereas here, if I'm the first one who's purple, I don't I'm purple, I only think of purple things. Wait, there's no one else here. Right? It's very hard for speciation to go down the road. Um, there are a few handful of cases where you think there is some speciation going on, but there's many, many more examples of allopatric speciation. Okay. <coughs> now, when we look at you know sister species, species that reach those closest relatives, they offer are you know separated by a ge geographic boundary of some kind, a river, a mountain, one's on an island, the other's not on that sort of thing. Okay. Um, but again, this can be fuzzy, and this can break down. So, cichlid, uh, riff lake cichlids. Who's heard of these cichlids? Yeah, so tell me something cool about them. Oh, there's a one that has like a mouth on the side of the face, and it's the scales on the other cichlids. Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't have its eyes on the No, its eyes are on both sides. But, eyes, but just its mouth is on Yeah, and there's lefties and righties, and they have like, they have this balancing selection for like, because sometimes we start looking over their, you know, their shoulder, and go, oh, let's look to the right, because maybe a lefty coming at me, then uh, righties do better. So that sort of cool evolutionary balance. Yeah, what else about these cichlids? Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know what that is. Cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, so mouth brooding is like when you, you know, keep your eggs in your mouth safe while they develop, right? So now there's, now there's like kind of cuckoo ones too. Great. What else about these fish? Just as far as evolution goes, haven't they diverged just like crazy rapidly? Mm-hmm. They sometimes diverge very, very rapidly. So we have these very recent lakes. It's like we have, you know, dozens to, I think it's a few hundred species of cichlids that arose. So it's a, clear, it's a good example of adaptive radiation. However, they're, go, they're going extinct. And not through species dying out, but through hybridization. So, as the, so they have, you know, fancy, sexy fin displays and things like that. And as the water gets murkier, it's harder to see. And so a female would be less choosy. Be like, okay, I can't really see. Yeah, you look good enough. Let's go. And, <laughs> and so they're actually merging. It's like alcohol fish. Yeah. Like the, a, a rave or something in the dark room. Dark room. Um, so, so I've seen them you know, on CNN or something. Um, and so you could have these fish going extinct through this merging through hybridization, so going the opposite way from speciation. Any questions about speciation? We'll talk about this more later in the class, but just want to give the idea of like what speciation is. These terms about the geography of it are important for historical reasons. Okay. Okay. Phylogenies. Okay. So I'm devoting the rest of the next 30 years of my life to this sort of thing. Okay. So I clearly think this is important. Right. Um, so what's a phylogeny? Well, they have one species becoming two. Right? What does it actually mean? It means we have a bunch of individuals. Right? And here we have male and female. Right? And we have offspring, and we have them happily, and then we have some barrier that causes a speciation event. Right? And they form two species. Right? And so this complex history of interbreeding is represented by this phylogeny, by this simple trait. Any questions about that? Sort of basic idea. Okay. <coughs> and so this history of splittings creates a series of nestings. Right? So if I am looking at this tree like this, that is what we normally see these phylogenies. But another way of looking at them that was also proposed by one of the other workers in this area is to look at the top down. So again, from the top down, I see it this way. And the interesting thing about this sort of view is that we see this there's a series of nestings. Right? So these two are in a bin, these two are in a bin, together they're in a bigger bin, right? And these are just the clades, right? And sometimes all its descendants moving down the tree. Right? Which bin is the most advanced here? It's sort of a weird question, right? You know? It doesn't look like that any of them are advanced, right? Or any of them are basal. It's a bunch of bins, right? With equal age. Okay, we're looking at the center of equal age. Okay. And looking at it this way, you might say, oh yeah, these there are beautiful, those are something like that. Right? But actually no, they're all of equal age, um, they're all the ones going along. Okay. So you think of you know, the tree, people have had these series of nestings. One important thing I'm going to go back to later, are these species independent? Each other. If I know something about this species, does something you know about this species? Yes. Yes. Why? They're related. They're related. Right. So when thinking about why things look the way they look, right, or why we have certain things that create the high frequency, it might not be due to it you know, being some cool trait to you know, the shared history. Right? Why do <coughs> Um, mammals have four limbs and produce milk. Is it because anything that has four limbs produces milk? No. Is it eating milk to produce four limbs? No. It is our ancestor had four limbs and made milk, and that was sort of inherited up the tree through this radiation. Right? It's not, it's not 5,000 independent origins of milk and four limbs. It was originated once and it's been duplicated. Right? They're not independent. This is going to be important later on as well. Any questions about that? So now the hardcore jargon. So this is a tree, okay? It's also called a phylogeny. Okay? 
It's also called a cladogram. It has no branch lengths. For math people, it's also called a connected graph with no cycles. If you're not a math person, it's okay. <coughs> this tippy thing is called a taxon, right? Or an operational taxon unit, OTU, or a leaf, or a terminal, or a terminal node. Okay. Look at that, look at all those terms, you see all those. Cats are often extant organisms, but they need not be. Right? I could put fossils on a tree, right? With a tree of dinosaurs. I'm putting, I'm putting on even a dinosaurs. Um, this tree of viruses. So I think a couple days ago, the tree of Ebola published to see if the current strain in Sierra Leone is the same as the one in Congo. It's not. Okay? And they can look back through time at you know, um, you know past patients who've had it. Um, you know, They've dug up in corpses, they have frozen from past outbreaks. And so not all those organisms are present at the same time. Right? That to help you get information about what's happened in the past. Um, any questions about that? Oftentimes these attacks are at the same time, they might say they're co evil. Okay. okay. This is a branch, also called an edge. And if you have questions about any of this, do interrupt me and let me know. It may have length. And that length corresponds to many things. It corresponds to time, okay. amount of character change, probability of character change, and so forth. Why do we care about that? Right, so the amount of shared ancestry you have is something about how similar you're expected to be. Right? So if humans and chimps diverged, you know, five million years ago, it's meant to be more similar than humans and oak trees that diverged, you know, half a billion years ago. Okay. And so that gives information about that. Why else might we care? Not quite. So, yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. So, um, so we can put that one. Yeah, so we can make this either map that on the tree or make branch lines that show that. Yeah, right. So we can say things about, you know, you know, um, if we do a tree of protein code and virus, we can see how quickly is that evolving. It's evolving faster and start reducing and get our own drugs and that sort of thing. The speciation question is good. I mean, we do think that there's a time, what set the time between branching points? That's some, some factor due to the um, amount of time you have to wait between speciation events or a factor of speciation and extinction. And so we have a part of the tree that has many branches that are short, it suggests that there's a faster speciation over there. Okay. Not completely, there's just lots of other factors play into it, but it does have to give a lot of information about also, you want to know about when things happen, right? So, when did whales first appear? Well, if you know the ages of branches, we can figure out, oh, whales started appearing, you know, 50 million years ago. It's a different story from saying whales appeared 70 million years ago, right? Then, like, whales would be fighting for the solars and the solars and things like that in the oceans, right? So, it's a very different environment then. And so, when things happen really matters as well. This gives you that information. Okay, other questions about this? Okay, internal node. Okay. Um, it's where edges meet. Okay. If we have just two center branches, it's called bifurcating or fully resolved or dichotomous. I think like you use dichotomous key, right? It's a key that has two branches in each step. Right. Um, nodes with more more branches are called polytonies or multicotomies or bad. Why might that be? A 
Okay, what do you mean by node support? Are you the same tree? No. Good. Right. And so on this tree, I might have a trait here that says, okay, B and C both have four limbs and produce milk, and this one does not have those. Right? So then that's a trait that sort of unites B and C. Um, and this tree would show it has to evolve twice. Okay? And so the character says for this tree. This is simpler, it's more sense to have complex traits of all one than twice, all is beneath it. Right? But if I have no characters there, right, I might not know which tree is which. Which, which, tree, is, which tree is better. Right? And what I might do to sh show people that I don't know which is better, right? to be honest, I will show a polytonal like that. I would have A, B, and C with no resolution there. So I don't know if B is much related. I don't know if you know if C is much related to A as it is here, or B as it is here, or even A. Or I'm sorry, show it that way. Because this shows lack of lack of knowledge about this. Okay. Um, I know there's actually not. I mean, I could imagine a tree where it actually there is this for, for real, right? It's not. It doesn't represent lack of information. What would what, what, what would lead to that sort of tree? So there's a big plane, and there's a big earthquake, two huge fault lines open up. So there's three areas of land, mm -hmm. and then these buffalo just go through the kind of things like branching. Exactly. So a branching event works in speciation. Right? We have, a, we have you know, this going to this, it's a speciation. So if we had two speciation events at the same time in the same taxon, right, to make three species, that would make a polytony as well. Okay? And that's what polytony we call the, a hard polytony. Right, because that's actually the truth. No matter how much data you throw at it, you're not going to be able to break that apart. So that's the truth. Right? Whereas this sort of polytonic where it's, I don't have any data for this yet. It could be either one. Or if it looked harder, it probably will. That's a little soft polytonic. Right? Most of the times when you see a polytonic like this, almost always, it represents a soft polytonic. So the scientist said, eh, we don't know what it is. We need to go. That's our best guess right now. Okay. <coughs> Note that this hides some information. So imagine I know that it's this tree or this tree, but it's never the third tree. So I, say, I know for rough fact it's never this tree for some reason. Right? Well, when I do a polytony, I miss that information. Right? I, I just know it could be any of these three trees, even though I know in reality it's actually one of these two. Um, and they're particularly used to get around that. Any questions about this? Okay. Another point which brought up was the support. Right? So a tree is an estimate of history. Right? It could be an estimate of history in half a billion years old. Do you know it with certainty? No. Okay? And so we, as biologists, we develop various measures to tell, tell you how much you should believe this tree. Okay? And there's rules of thumb about them, that sort of thing. But we're not going to get the details of that here. Okay? But if you're looking at a tree in a paper, look to see if the numbers supporting the branches are high. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Root. Right. No. Okay. And <coughs> it has a node that represents the most recent common ancestor. MRCA, or your mapier term, is common of all the taxa. This shows the direction of time. Right? So I know that this is before this is before this. Okay, and right. Any questions about that? A clade. A 
declared as an ancestor and all his descendants. Definitely must must use well on the pretest actually. Okay, it's also called a monophyletic group. Okay. So this is a clade. Okay. This is also a clade. Okay. This is a clade. But so is this. They're different clades. Not because they're ancestors. Even though they're the same descendants. Okay. Does that make sense? Paraphyletic group, an ancestor in some, but not all of its descendants, something like this. Okay. And a polyphyletic group is even worse. Okay. It may not include the ancestor. In this class, I'm not going to make, a, I'm not going to stress um, polyphyletic versus paraphyletic um, because you know it, they're sometimes hard to distinguish and they're both bad. Okay. Why are they bad? Let's about the history of the organism. Why not? Right. It tastes like chicken group. Okay, why else? People have done that for years, though. I mean, apes don't include humans. It's a to name those. You're right, it's a problem, but right. So, modern people naming things would object to that, but they think we should name things in natural groups. But it is possible to do, like, everyone but Larry is a group. Right? So, all apes but humans are a group. Sort of thing. But that is problematic. But what else? Yeah? It can often be misleading in like, Mm -hmm. Right. If I group all things that fly together, right, I have a group of bats and birds and like that, that all have, you know, wings and all have, you know, high metabolism and all have, you know, um, ability to balance, you know, with their eyes closed and all these cool traits, right? But there's also many other traits that are better explained by where they are in the tree of life. It's better explained bats as you know, being a member of the animal clade and birds being a dinosaur clade. So then what you do talking in groups about each other is, are whales fish? So you have, so you've been had this beaten out of you, right? Whales aren't fish, right? Talk about, you know, are whales fish? All right, one minute. All right, so one if you think whales are fish, two if you think not. Are whales fish? One if, two if not. Right. So everyone says whales are not fish. Okay. Are sharks fish? Sharks are fish, okay. 
okay, are trout fish, are silicates fish. This will be one of your keywords. These are cool, low fin fish that like fin their heads and really, yeah. Silicates are fish. Okay. Um, let's put humans and whales. Okay. Who can draw a phylogeny for these? Okay. Who can draw an accurate phylogeny? Okay. Yeah. Come on. Almost. Go back to you. Someone else? Any theology? Can you do it? Okay. I think we need to have the structure holding and see if we can stop. So, like, 